Hello Dwellers and welcome to another episode of Looking Back. Before I get started with the episode, just like to say sorry there was no content last week and obviously this video's run a little late as well as I've actually had a few problems in regards to my laptop for my recording etc which just managed to get it sorted straight now so we can get back to how it's supposed to be. Well, this week we're going to be covering a game that came out back in 2008 by Bethesda and one of my favourite games of all time. Of course, I'm talking about Fallout 3. Now, as you tell by well, the channel name and the artwork, etc. as well, Fallout is one of my games that really inspired me as a gamer and actually inspired me towards building this channel as well. So, let's get into the video. I don't want to set the world on fire I just want to start a flame in your heart in Now, Fallout landed back in 2008 after Bethesda brought the license and rights to the franchise from Black Isle Studios. Obviously they're responsible for Fallout 1, 2, Fallout Tactics and Fallout Brotherhood of Steel Tactics. Now obviously being a sequel to Fallout 2, most people originally expected it to be another game with the aerial view and the click and move style of play, but instead the world received a first person style shooter game. Obviously you can go to third person as well, but it's on that basis and they worked off the Elder Scrolls engine and when it came out it was far beyond what anybody expected. See the game was released with a few different versions. The, the traditional version uh, came out. There was also two special edition versions. One that came with just a bobblehead and an art book and the other one which was the collector's edition came out with the Voltec lunchbox uh, which then came obviously with the bobblehead and the artwork and the game itself, of course. Uh, well, onto the game its actual self. It's a game that was set in a post-apocalyptic version of America. See, a branch of the timeline away from the real timeline where America and China were at war with each other and decimated most of the world by launching nuclear warheads at each other. Now, one of the main governs for this game is people moved into vaults underground that were created by vault uh, Although most of these vaults were actually designed for experiments to be done by vault on behalf of the government. For example, there's uh, cloning that's done in the one lab which resulted hundreds and hundreds of one person called Gary. Uh, the forced evolution virus, which is a mainstay in the Fallout franchise, uh, vault where they forced people to be injected with the virus or gassed with it and it would turn them into super mutants. Another one where they drugged everybody with psychotropics just to see what happens and a lot lot more. Now the wasteland itself was made up of a series of settlements. Uh, you've got for example Megaton that was made from broken blame, uh, pardon me, plane parts. Arafu which was a group of shanty huts that were built upon a broken bridge. And of course you had Rivet City which was made on an aircraft carrier. Throughout the wasteland as well you'll find lots of other little settlements, just one or two huts put together and perhaps a couple of farms and then of course the vaults themselves created by vault -Tec. And inside of that a big part of Fallout 3 was its variety of characters which you find in and out of the settlements. They were all different and they all added their own twists uh, to the wasteland, to their own stories and of course they really helped you see what life was like for the survivors of the apocalypse it really gave you something to engage on with the game and one of the strengths of this game is the combination of how great the desolate wasteland is and how great the characters are and just seeing the night and day difference between what it's like out there and what it's like inside the settlements and seeing how people had to live their lives day by day and how your interactions in the world uh, as the Lone Wanderer basically changed how things happened in the wasteland and obviously as the story developed the bigger and bigger role you played in shaping the future of the wasteland. Now another big part of Fallout 3 was the music. 
uh, from the radio playing really upbeat tunes. Uh, basically, you had three dogs, the DJ and the radio, pipping his bit as he went along. But the music they added in has always been fantastic with Fallout. And then the adding of the suspense gripping themes that you get when you've got the radio turned off. It really built up that tension of travelling across the wasteland knowing that danger could be around any single corner. Obviously that leads on to one of the other great strengths that came with this game was exploration. Now, for me, one of my favourite things with Fallout series as a whole, but especially in Fallout 3, is the ability to explore anywhere in that game. It's one of the strengths. There's a lot of games that claim you can explore anywhere, but in Fallout 3 you really could explore anything, anywhere, anytime, as long as you could survive. There's so many different things that are available in the wasteland and even within the settlements again in Fallout that it just added such a richness to the experience of being able to do this. I mean, from travelling out to Oasis and finding the people hidden away there to just walking around in open, desolate land, it was always a different experience no matter where you go in the game. And that's definitely one of the things that ties this game down so great. Ooh, my own computer there. Uh, obviously another great part of the game are the enemies now if you start off with human based enemies mainly the raiders that you find that will just try and rob and pillage you now basically if you've ever watched Mad Max the people you get in that that's your raiders and Fallout uh, as Fallout was already influenced heavily by the Mad Max series which people that created it have already said that from the get go but then also you've got feral ghouls which are basically like your zombies then moving up into things like Yao Guai, which are your mutated bears, and the biggest, baddest on the wasteland, your Death Claws. Now, obviously, Death Claws are giant mutated creatures that move very fast, very powerful, and generally scare the crap out of anybody they come across. Um, one of the most binding elements for Fallout 3 was the storyline. Now, great storyline of you start off in Vault 101. The vault opens, your father leaves, and you go on a quest to find your father. It's a storyline that builds itself up, layer after layer after layer, with lots of small stories building together to create it as you go. And for me, it's one of my favourite storylines that's ever been in a game, because it's just so beautifully crafted, and it just makes... You make a whole selection of moral choices throughout the game. Uh, obviously, on the side that one of the big things in Fallout 3 is your morality. Are you good or are you evil or are you just in between? Everything you do in the game has a reaction in one way or the other. You change your karma depending on who you go after, what you do, how you handle things and it really helps you shape your character as a whole. See on top of that you've got things like the uh, system you've got where you can level yourself up, you can choose perks throughout the game and again, for example, you pick a perk that helps you find more ammunition in a crate. It helps you as a survivor. You can pick a perk where you barter better or you, you increase your speech so you've got more options to talk to people. Helps you talk your way out of situations. Also, for those that played the game, they know that this system was called the Special System. And basically, it's just a great system that helps you develop your character and really build the character you want to have in the wasteland. Obviously, a lot of what affects this as well is the experience points you get, which there's plenty of experience points available because you've got side quests in the game. And there are so, so many side quests in Fallout 3, and they can pop out of anywhere. It can be from talking to a person who will ask you to do a favour, to simply finding an item, and then you've got to find out more about what happened with this item or who it belongs to. Obviously, expanding on that, like with most games now, Fallout 3 had its own downloadable content, or DLC if you prefer. Uh, they had the pit, which is where you travel to another map. Uh, and then you basically go to the north uh, pencil area. And it's a whole slaver trade market. And everybody there is trapped in working. And the whole storyline involves around them pushing for freedom against the people that are oppressing them. And then, again choices and choices to which way you go and which side you're on you had point lookout which threw you into a wasteland with a whole new host of enemies a whole new load of weapons and basically it's 
quite a challenge point to look at. There's a great chip twist on the fact that it's a swamp land, not the open barren wasteland. So you really got to dive into a new style of gameplay with that as well. And obviously taking on a whole new host of enemies and a new storyline again. And Mothership Zeta was in it, which was a really cool DLC. It threw you up into a spaceship and you had to fight aliens instead. And you could take control of an actual ship above Earth and have a space battle. And of course, the last one is Broken Steel, which is, I thought, the coolest one out of them because it allowed you to continue on from the end of the game. So it expanded the storyline even further for you. And basically, that mission then was about you hunting down the Enclave and going through the steps of really uh, just securing Capital Wasteland. And each one adds their own charm to the series. This. You get games that have really crap DLCs and then one or two decent ones at times. But Fallout 3 gave every single DLC a great treat for the player. So, also the only extra thing down there as well. How do you survive in a wasteland like this? By your weapons. No. Including the DLCs as well. You get a whole range of weapons that relate to everything from a little 10mm pistol, a shotgun, right the way to, well... A mini nuke launcher that launch, literally launches off mini nuclear warheads from your hand. The weapons always give a great diversity and variety in the game. And they really add to the whole experience of how you plan and choose and strategize how you're going to survive in the wasteland. Now, one of the most important things in the game is, is it replayable? Well, for myself, most people I know that have played Fallout 3, they've played it loads of times i've probably completed it myself at least 20 times so as replay value absolutely 10 out of 10 on it the game as a whole i'd say 9 out of 5 out of 10 on it there's a couple of things i could have tweaked with it but it's an amazing game and if you haven't played fallout 3 i would say get it now you can get it dirt cheap online or at a second hand shop so it's a game that's worth getting hold of and definitely something for you to try out and just make sure you've got plenty of spare time when you do pick it up because this game does not take just five minutes. Anyway, thanks for listening guys. I'm Shadow sure Soul Dweller and also thank you for putting over the fact that I've still got a bit of a sore throat as you can probably hear. But thanks for watching again. As always, your support's amazing and if you've played Fallout 3, let me know in the comments below what your experiences were and what your favourite things were with Fallout. And as always, I will see you out there. And as always, thanks for watching the video guys, I hope you liked it. Also, if you want to stay up to date as well, another way is you can catch me on Facebook, the address just there on the screen. And of course, for more videos, you just look to your left there, you can see that being one of the latest videos that's landed. And to the right here is a video picked by YouTube, just for you. And of course, hit the guy in the middle to subscribe to have more to stay up to date on all the latest content.